Today I want to share with you what I think is one of my most exciting data sets. And that's not just for the data that it is, but for the progression that it shows in terms of coral reef remote sensing science. So as a little bit of a sneak peek, this is what it looks like. But before I explain that, I want to tell you a story about it first. So about 20 years ago, when I started working on coral reef remote sensing, we would go out to the reef and take measurements of the different corals, algae, sand and the other habitats on the reef. And by taking measurements, what I mean is we point an instrument at it and measure the amount of reflected and absorbed light. And what we're looking for is potentially the type of coral or algae that we're seeing, but also maybe something to do with its health. So as you can see, I, I'm standing I've got mid calf deep in water and I'm pointing the spectrometer at the coral and my supervisor Stuart is there with uh, a tub and the, the spectrometer and computer inside this tub. So not the best thing to actually have on the reef as it's not waterproof, but a really, really clunky setup. And then we take this data back to back to the lab, analyze it, and then start to understand how we could make maps of the environment based on this. Now we'd also use these instruments underwater. So you can also see me here and so I'm pointing at the coral and there's a 10 meter fiber opt optic cable going all the way back up to the boat. And we'd have a buddy phone so that we could communicate what we're pointing at and when it was time to take a measurement and all those sorts of things. So we were tethered, if you like, and it was really quite difficult and challenging to get this information from the reef. So fast forward 20 years and you can see my drone up there in the sky with the same sort of instrument mounted on it. So this is a spectrometer that's now about the size of a matchbox. So compare that to the tub that you saw floating on the reef beforehand. And I can now fly the drone across the reef and make these same sorts of measurements, but make thousands of them as well. And I'm you know, not restricted by towing something along. And so this is the data set that I'd like to share with you today. This is a result of one of these flights. And you can see on my screen on the left hand side, you can see a couple of lines. So we fly the drone in what I like to call the lawnmower pattern, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and taking all these measurements. And each measurement is showing us information about the amount of reflected and absorbed light in different wavelengths. So not just what we can see with our own eyes in the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum, but also in near infrared as well. And what's sitting behind my image there on the screen is a load of numbers because that's what this is, right? Lots and lots of data. To give you a feel of what the data actually looks like, you can open it up in, in a spreadsheet like Excel. It gives you information about the, the time when the data point was taken, latitude, longitude, altitude, and what's happening in terms of the roll pitch and yaw of the aircraft when it was taking the measurements. Now all the other lines or columns that you see across the top here are the different wavelengths of light that the spectrometer was measuring. And then each row represents an individual sample. So you can see the amount of reflected and absorbed light in each wavelength for every single spectrum that it's measuring or the feature that it's looking at at that time. So you can see there's many, many thousands of measurements there. And so if analyzing data in Excel or any, any other form of statistical package isn't really for you, I've also included a Google Earth file for you. So let's have a look. Let's zoom all the way in here and you'll see exactly where we're going to enter Heron Reef here and you can zoom in further. So you can see now that these flight lines are actually made up of individual measurement points. So zoom all the way in and you can pick individual points. And as you click on each one, you can get the spectrum that was measured at that particular time and location. And so you can do that and have a look at areas where we know we have some coral. And so I know that that's the shape of coral, for example, and we can go over to areas where there's a little bit more rock and a bit more sand. And you can see that these fingerprints, if you like, or what we call spectral signatures, actually look different over different features. And it's these shapes that we use 
to be able to tell us different, different pieces of information about what we're looking at. So whether it's trying to analyse the way the, the coral or other plants are photosynthesising or even just telling the difference between the different features on the reef. So there we go. I am really keen to hear what you think of about this data. So download it and let me know what you think.